Hey guys, Sarah Eder here. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining today. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you guys can keep getting amazing videos like this on real estate investing. So today we're going to talk about how to pick the right market when you're you know, deciding to start a new real estate portfolio or if you're considering a new market. I get this question from a lot of people. It's really tough to decide what city, what state, what province even do you start investing in? It can get really overwhelming. You read a lot of headlines. This city sounds good today. This city sounds good tomorrow. And I think it's really important that you understand the basic fundamentals uh, when you're doing something like this because you really want to make sure that you're picking the right market for the long term and not just chasing after some fad that's going to lose you money really quickly there's usually a reason that these properties are or these uh like different cities are a fad and it's usually not because they have sound economic fundamentals there's usually something new and flashy that's driving people you can find markets that are going to last throughout the years and that's something that you really want to consider when you're picking a market especially because in order to gain tremendous wealth and you know become a millionaire, get that seven, eight figure portfolio, you need to be picking one niche and one market because that's really what is going to continue to grow your wealth rapidly. If you're spreading all your attention and time on a million different markets, you're never going to be able to buy enough houses quickly enough to achieve that millionaire status fast. So I highly encourage that you guys pick one market to start, get really good with one type of investing in one market, and you'll see a lot more success. I focus in Brantford, Ontario, as well as Hamilton, and a little bit in the outlying areas like Woodstock and Paris. That's because I have a variety of needs for my different investors, and that region is close enough that I have a lot of good realtors, wholesalers, and just a lot of experience in those markets to feel pretty confident about being in a couple of different cities. But I started out in one, and that's really important to understand. You need to get that experience before you consider expanding into other markets. So we're going to talk about just basic, basic fundamentals that you guys can find on the internet when you're evaluating a market to start in. So if you are thinking about, you know, diving into a particular market, go on the government websites, go on the local city websites. They will give you so much information about these markets. Because so, the first thing you really want to consider are general population trends. If you're looking to buy properties in an area and you want to rent them to people, you need to know if the, the population is increasing or decreasing. Are they getting net migration from other cities? Are people leaving because a certain industry closed? You need to go on these city websites and they're going to give you historical statistical data that shows you exactly what's happening, not news headlines, true statistical census data. That's what you're looking for when you want to consider these things. So again, consider population trends. This is like a booming new city or let's say new young hip millennials moving there. You definitely want to consider that. As an aging population, you know, maybe you want to consider doing some of retirement homes or rentals if people are kind of flocking there from like a retirement standpoint. It's not a bad model and I know some people that do it. The second thing to consider is jobs and industry. So it's really important to know that, again, this isn't just like a fad that's popping up and people are just moving there for some reason or people are just investing there. There needs to be fundamentals. If you're going to be charging premium rents, upgrading your properties and doing a good job, you need to know that there is jobs and industry and not just one. Many investors have gotten into some trouble because there's only you know, one major industry or one major source of income in that town. When that industry, if or when, it goes under, those people could be in some serious trouble. They're going to be moving. They're not going to be able to pay their rent. They're going to move out. It's not the situation you want to find yourself in. You want to find yourself a local economy that's booming, that has tons of different industries, a depth of types of um, you know, industry, economic development, different things like that. So definitely consider where are people getting their jobs from? Are jobs coming into the local area or are people leaving and commuting? You really need to figure out from that census data and they're gonna tell you 
on these city websites. Google City of Hamilton. They'll tell you what the local industry is. They'll tell you how the growth trends have changed and shifted over the past five to 10 years. It'll give you a much stronger idea of how viable that market is. That if one industry were to close tomorrow, is that city still gonna be sustainable and can people still find jobs? The other important thing to consider is the vacancy rate. Now, this is pretty standard across Ontario. We have historically low vacancy rates. So I wouldn't be like super, super concerned about that, but it's definitely something to take into consideration when you're buying rentals. Are people desperate for rentals? Is it super, super low? Those are really exciting and important things to, to know. If they have a 1.2% vacancy rate, go buy some properties if you know, it fits all of these other historical um, trends that are happening. Something else that you can consider um, is the economic development that's happening in the area. Um, and of course, the general desirability. That's something that maybe a lot of people don't consider, but it's important. You want to be investing in an area that people actually want to be living in, right? You don't want to pick a neighborhood or a market where just because it has a good vacancy rate, there's some decent jobs and, and whatnot. What's the desirability? Do people actually want to be moving there? And this kind of will tie into like some of these other points because desirability has a lot to do with, for example, accessibility of transportation, the type of demographics that are living in that area. So do your research, figure out if this is somewhere that people actually want to be living. An easy way to do that is to go on Kijiji or Rent Finder or some of these sites and see how many rentals there actually are. So many people are searching for rentals in this area. If there's not a lot of people with wanted ads looking for rent and, you know, there seems to be a lot of rents, you know, and, and properties just kind of floating around on Kijiji, then maybe it isn't quite as desirable as the stats are showing. And again, you want to look at economic development in the area. The cities know a lot more than we do, and they know what's coming. So if they are pumping a ton of development dollars into enhancing the downtown core, adding businesses, giving incentives to locals to stay in the community and start up small shops and, and things like that, it's really important. You want the city on board because if the city is against rentals, it's against economic development, it's not putting a lot of money into its local community, you might struggle with a lot of these other things and people might actually start leaving because they're not seeing improvements to their town. So this is cool because most um, city websites have an entire economic development or planning page and section on their website. They'll show you exactly what projects they have in mind, how much money they're putting into development in the next year or so. It can really show you how serious they are about improving their town or city. The last thing is just plain and simple, transportation. This is something that's massive in Ontario because if you are investing in Ontario or you know anything about Canada, they are doing some massive things in terms of connecting some of the major cities to Toronto. So we have the LRT line, we have the GO line that's opened up in Niagara through Hamilton. That has changed the landscape of real estate investing and it's going to continue to change the landscape. You can see how much housing prices have gone up in the Niagara region just because of that go line. Um, and it's only going to, you know, continue if you look, you know, east of Toronto, the 407 expanding up into Peterborough. It makes such a tremendous impact because people want accessibility. They want to be able to commute. They want to live in more affordable outlying areas. And transportation doesn't just have to mean the LRTs. It can also mean bus routes local transportation hubs. I've been to a lot of cities where they have terrible transportation and people don't want to live there because not everyone has a vehicle. Not everyone is able to get around. And so when you see cities like Guelph, for example, that are upgrading all of their bus uh, benches to install little shelters and they're expanding lines and upgrading the bus systems, that's awesome. That tells me that, you know, the city's dumping in economic development and improving transportation to keep the locals happy. Those things are super important. So here are just some six basics, guys. There's obviously a lot more that goes into evaluating a market, but if you're really stuck and you're trying to decide, you know, where exactly do I want to invest? 
This is really, really important to consider. If your market doesn't have all of these things, I would be a little worried. It is good to think outside the box and you know try to look for markets that maybe are a little untapped, but make sure that it has something to back it up and that's not just some temporary trend or fad because you're gonna find yourself in five years holding on to property that is actually diminished in value instead of appreciated, and that is what you do not want. So this is my tip for you guys for today on picking a market to start your real estate portfolio. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content, please remember to hit subscribe below and stay tuned for all my new videos coming up soon. Take care until next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into my channel. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you're looking for even more amazing content on real estate investing, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be releasing amazing videos every single week so you won't want to miss it. If you want to learn more about working with me and what I do, make sure to check out my website as well. Bye guys.